Hi there, I'm Matt Easton, historic weapons expert, arms dealer, and also Star Wars fan. Now, like millions of Star Wars fans around the world, I've been looking forward to the release of The Book of Boba Fett on Disney+. Plus. And the first episode didn't disappoint, at least me. But what lots of Star Wars fans and just general watchers out there don't necessarily realise is that as well as the usual fantasy and sci-fi weapons that we find on Star Wars, there are also a bunch of historical weapons. That's right, there are weapons on Star Wars which are from real life history. And in this video we're going to take a look at some of those. So hopefully whether you're a Star Wars fan or whether you're just into historical warfare, military history, there'll be something in this video for you. But very briefly before I go on, we're going to have a quick word from my sponsors for this video who are Mecarina. Mecarina is the awesome free to download, free to play, skill based game where you can use giant mechs to destroy your enemies. It's a 5 versus 5 team shooter and you can pick it up and play it any way you like. There are tons of mechs with unique abilities and a massive variety of weapons that you can add and upgrade. There are thousands of ways you can upgrade your mechs and hundreds of skins. There are loads of different game modes including control point capture, 5v5 and also 2 vs 2 deathmatch. Just recently Mech Arena's added a brand new mech, Stalker, and his predator drive ability, as well as a load of new cool stuff that's coming up. Mech Arena is completely free to download, completely free to play, and you can either use the link in the description box below or the QR code on screen to download it right now. And if you do that, you'll get 50,000 credits, 3 gold crates, and 1 mech skin. Heraldic! To help kickstart your game. If you're quick, you can add me to your friends, my name's Context, and we can play some games together. So don't wait around, go and download it right now. So thanks for sticking with me. Now let's get back to the Star Wars Historical Weapons crossover. So one of the most famous and iconic hand weapons Weapons, I guess from the original Star Wars movies are the weapons used by the Sand People aka Tusken Raiders known as a Gaddafi or Gaffy Stick. I'm going to say Gaffy Stick because it's easier to pronounce and um, these are perhaps by weapon aficionados they're recognized as being a crossover between two historical weapons. Do you know what they are? So I think that a lot of people realize that this is a wooden club married to a metallic object. Okay, we're gonna deal with each of those separately because believe it or not, they are actually separate historical weapons from completely different parts of the world. So the wooden stick, now that is perhaps the most uh, immediately recognizable, I think, anyway, to people who study um, uh, ethnographic and anthropological weapons. And these are, Fijian sticks. These are a type of club. In Fiji these are known as a totakia. Now I should just mention that of these gaffy sticks there's a variety. Okay so we see different types of metallic head, we see different types of wooden head. And what is interesting is um, at least in some of the media, I believe the, the games, we actually see varieties of wooden club end that are more similar to other Fijian war clubs but they are still Fijian war clubs. A type called a sally for example is one type that's shown. And in fact if we look in the most um, recent episode, uh, episode one, season one of the Book of Boba Fett, we actually noticed that they don't all have exactly the same club end either. But the most iconic and most famous type is the Totakia Fijian War Club. Um, and that is simply a carved piece of wood which has a shaft. It has a forwards curved um, spiked knob on the end with a spike in the middle. And this spike was used like a war hammer or pick and it was intended to hit people in the head and penetrate their skin skulls. So it is a piercing weapon as well as a bludgeoning weapon. Now in fact in the modern antique world you can collect uh, Fijian war clubs. They're incredibly uh, varied, very very interesting and they've become rather expensive. I suspect that in uh, in the 1970s when they were making A New Hope uh, these were quite easy to come by and fairly cheap. Since the 1970s they've actually become rather collectible and expensive objects. So these days they almost certainly use uh, replicas. They don't use original examples of 19th century Fijian war clubs. But nevertheless I think it's fantastic that this relatively unknown or not exactly famous um, war club from Fiji in this case which does have parallels with certain um, New Zealand and Tongan war clubs as well. There's certainly some uh, sort of cultural relationship going on there but this is a very specifically Fijian war club. I think it's great that it's become so famous through the medium of Star Wars. But the gaffy stick as mentioned isn't simply that Fijian war club at one end. At the other end it is a metallic object. Now the original ones made in A New Hope seem to have been pretty much a metal pipe with flanges added onto them. However since then we've seen a variety of different shapes and sizes and designs of that metallic part and some of those 
are flanged maces as we would find in our own real world history. So what is a flanged mace, I hear you cry? Well, quite simply, it's a specialised weapon that is predominantly used for hitting people who are wearing armour. Things like swords and even spears aren't particularly effective against people wearing developed armour. That's what armour's for. So whether it's mail or whether it's plate armour, whether it's a combination of the two, they are very good at resisting bladed weapons. And so bludgeoning weapons became popular, particularly in the medieval evil period in Europe, but also if we look at the 18th and 19th centuries in places like India or Persia, then they were also used as well. So flanged maces were one particular, we'll say it's convergent evolution, particular weapon that developed in different parts of the world, perhaps most famously in medieval and Renaissance Europe, and that includes Western, Central and Eastern Europe. But equally, it was found in Asia as well um, and the Middle East. So if we go to Persia, they had flanged maces there. If we go to India, they had flanged maces there. And the flanged mace is just a way of essentially, it, it's a uh, more developed version of the club. It's a way of hitting someone very hard, but focusing that force into a more limited space. And so perhaps, ironically, poetically, however you want to look at it, the gaffy stick is a marriage between a mace from one set of cultures and a mace from another very specific culture wedded together into a long staff weapon. And we see this being used by the Tuscan Raiders themselves in a variety of different combinations and designs. And additionally, of course, famously now, we see it used by Boba Fett. First, we see him using it in The Mandalorian, and then we see him again um, around them, and we presume this is how he got access to them in episode one of The Book of Boba Fett. Now, a little piece of trivia for you on this specific flanged mace shown in the first episode of The Book of Boba Fett. I immediately leapt out of my seat and was like, I know that mace. And I'll tell you why, because I helped to design it. So this particular mace is a replica made by Deepika of India and was the measurements for it were gathered by me from the British Museum and passed to the night shop and they passed them to Deepika. So there is a personal connection between me, Matt Easton, and uh, the weapon you see on screen in the Book of Boba Fett. Now the next historical weapon we see in episode one of the Book of Boba Fett is not strictly speaking a historical weapon, it's rather a sci-fi weapon that is inspired by historical weapons. And these are the weapons that we see in the hands of the assassins, kind of ninjas, if we're honest about it, who are sent to assassinate Boba Fett and Fennec. Now, these weapons are without a shadow of doubt, uh, a modern invention in terms of their electric charge that they seem to have. They are force weapons, and of course we see energy shields used as well, which I think was pretty damn cool. But they are, without a shadow of a doubt, heavily influenced by historic weapons. Specifically, the weapon that clearly inspired them was the Aztec or at least Central American Makawitil. Now, the Makawitil is a weapon which is um, emerged in an area where they didn't have access to iron or steel or even bronze, and so therefore obsidian, which was um, fairly prolific in the region, was used to make blades. If you have access to obsidian, which can be harder than steel, not tougher than steel, but harder than steel, and as is famously known, can produce an extremely sharp edge, um, then if you have access to obsidian, then you use it in your weapons, just the same as flint was used in other parts of the world, and they combined that with wood to produce weapons that are like swords, um, spears, and axes, and weapons like this, where in Europe, for example, we may have used bronze and then iron, they used obsidian um, in Central America. And so the Makawitl is a very interesting weapon that kind of ends up being similar to a sword, and we could call it perhaps a type of sword. And these weapons that we see used in the Book of Boba Fett are clearly emulating the shape because of the uh, kind of rectangular blades that are sticking out of the end of these weapons. They have the overall proportions and look of an Aztec weapon. And some of you might point out that the, the shaft is longer, that's true. I would counter that with the fact that we know, and we don't know a huge amount about Aztec weapons because we only receive most of the information through biased European sources, artistic and written. But it does seem that they had a variety. We know that they had spear varieties where the blades were around the top of the spearhead. We know they had sword varieties which had a short handle and a longer blade. But equally, we know that they had varieties which had longer handles and tended to be used by two hands. Um, so it does seem that there were staff weapon or pole weapons versions of the Makawitl and they may have gone by different names. 
Um, and indeed, these weapons, whilst they are not exactly historical weapons based on the Aztec sword, they are clearly inspired by them. And I don't think it's any coincidence that they decided to give these assassins energy shields because we know that historically the Aztecs did use this Macuitil type weapon with a shield predominantly, like sword and shield. Now there is another weapon that we see in the hands of these ninja-like assassins and we liken them to ninjas in a number of ways. They wear the kind of face mask which is a fantasy idea of a ninja, it's not historical. But additionally we see them throw two weapons at Fennec. Now it's impossible to see, I've, I've paused the screen several times and tried to slow it down. I can't really see what these objects are but it's very clear that they are based on so-called shuriken or various throwing weapons that were supposedly, supposedly used by the shinobi or the ninja in medieval and renaissance Japan. Uh, now if you want to learn more about ninja and the shinobi then in fact if you search my channel you can find a video where I recently did an interview with an expert on that subject which I am not. But nevertheless it's clear that these assassins were modelled on ninjas so we can call them Tatooine ninjas if you like because I don't know any other name for them at the moment. So Tatooine ninjas and they have a, a hand weapon that's based on the Macuitl from uh, Mexico and they have throwing weapons that are clearly based on shuriken from Japan. Now the final historical weapon that was featured in the first episode of the Book of Boba Fett was a complete surprise to me and I was absolutely delighted to see it. No less because it was in the hands of one of my favourite characters from the original trilogy and that is Gamorrean Guards. Now Gamorrean Guards uh, look at quite like orcs basically don't they? They're kind of pig-like orc hybrids and they were famously originally one of the types of guards that Jabba the Hutt had in his palace and in fact in this episode we see that these are guards, those are the original guards and maybe not the guards but they are certainly related to the guards that we saw in Return of the Jedi and um, they, they are now disarmed okay so they don't have any of the weapons that they had before. Previously we've always seen Gamorrean guards armed with rather orcish, orc-like weapons usually large axes. In fact one of the axes that we see them with, um, especially in the toys that I had when I was a kid, was really a kind of bardiche that's joined to the shaft in two different places but that doesn't feature in this episode of Boba Fett. Instead um, we actually see them with a sword which I totally didn't expect to see in any of the Star Wars um, iterations and that is a Nepalese Korra. Now Nepal, uh, just above India, is fo most famous perhaps to weapon aficionados as the home of the Gurkhas and their famous Gurkha knife, the Kukri. Now the Kukri is the small sidearm, knife sized, large knife sized or short sword sized um, sidearm that you can wear anywhere, carry anywhere. At one time everyone in Nepal basically carried one men and women alike, it was used as a tool, used as a weapon and it's very very famous and is still continued to be carried today in the British Army and the Indian Army as well by the Gurkhas and many others as well. Very very useful weapon but what's less famous is the Kora and in many ways if we view the Kukri as the knife of Nepal, the Kora is the sword of Nepal and traditionally would have been used predominantly with a shield. So the Kora and shield would have been the primary weapons, the Kukri often would have been a backup weapon although in the age of firearms when people started carrying guns instead of swords and shields then they carried a firearm as their primary weapon and then the Kukri stayed as their secondary backup weapon. Now the Kora is very characteristic because it has a forwards curve, the cutting edge is on the the um, concave uh, inner curve rather than uh, like a sabre on the outer curve and it is real a heavy chopper and you'll notice with the flared end therefore a little bit like an axe with a flared end it has a lot of mass at the tip much like a mace as well so they are really really powerful choppers and it's interesting it's always one of the things worth noting that Nepal is famous for a forwards curved knife and a forwards curved sword so they really liked forward curves uh, on their cutting weapons. So I didn't expect to see this in the hands of the Gamorrean guards, we don't yet know from the story given whether that is a Gamorrean weapon because they were disarmed, they were without any weapons at all when they first came to Boba Fett so it's possible that Boba Fett acquired these weapons from somewhere else and equipped them with them. I don't think that Gamorreans have ever been seen with a Nepalese Kora before but nevertheless as a weapon collector, as an antique arms dealer, it was fantastic, and I have a large collection of cookeries. It was fantastic for, for me to see, 
a famous and beloved Nepalese weapon on the silver screen once again. Um, so I hope this has been interesting to you, whether you're a Star Wars fan or whether you're a historical weapons and antiques fan or whether you're just interested in general in this kind of stuff. I hope it's been interesting to you. Please share this video around. I'm sure that there are lots of Star Wars fans out there who are not particularly interested in weapons who might be interested in this video. So if you know a Star Wars fan and someone who might like to learn a little bit more about what they're seeing in the book of Boba Fett but they haven't don't know anything about historical weapons then send them this video and I hope they enjoy it as well. Thanks for watching I have been Matt Easton I'll continue to be and hopefully I'll see you back on the channel really soon. Cheers folks! Thanks for watching we've got extra videos on Patreon please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers folks!